Hi friends! Today we're going to be doing my wrap up for Tis the Seasathon. Very late. Technically the Tis the Seasonathon ended like a week ago. It ended on the Sunday before last. I'm really far behind but as you can tell I don't really have much of a voice at this point and I really didn't have one a few days ago. I've been trying to wait until this cold has passed in order to film but it's been three weeks and so you're just gonna have to deal with my voice going in and out otherwise this will never get done. So here we are for the Tis the Seasathon. Tis the Seasathon. Have I been saying that the whole time? For the readathon, I was able to read a total of four books for the six challenges. Um, I did not make it to two of the books that I had, but considering what I've been reading the past couple of months, four books in a week is really good for me. We're going to discuss those books and what challenges they covered, and I was able to cover all of the challenges with the books that I had. I just didn't read a book for every challenge, and that's totally okay. The first book that I read was for the challenge of reading a book with snow on the cover, and for that I read It's All Downhill From Here, which is the 10th book in the Creepover series by PJ Knight. These are not Christmassy at all, it just was snowy and short. Something that I've been wanting to read that I knew I could read in a readathon. These are a series of creepy sleepover books, hence Creepover. Uh, I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I did really enjoy it. I really like these books. They're super cute. They're mid-grade. They're cute. They're fun. They're a little spooky and I just am enjoying them. The next book that we're going to discuss is going to cover both the challenges of reading a book that you received as a gift and reading a book with a title related to music and for that I have Let It Snow by Maureen Johnson, John Green, and uh, Lauren Miracle. I always want to say Lindsay Miracle and I don't know why. This is a triple story Christmas themed book that each story revolves around a different pair of teens but the whole thing is all interconnected and for me personally I gave this a three out of five stars and really that's just because I really loved Maureen's story which is the first story in the book. I would say like Maureen's story was like a five star and John's and Lauren's were maybe a 2.5. To me this reads as something that would do a lot better as like a teen rom-com type of movie which is good because they made it into a movie. I plan to watch that this week. It just didn't really work for me on page and I'm not a huge fan of John Green's writing anyway and I've never read anything from Lauren Miracle but her main character was just really annoying. I think that was the large part of the issue with her story was that the main character was just real annoying which she does have character growth so I get that that's kind of the concept but it just was not what I was really in the mood for I guess at the time. So the next book that I read that covers both the challenges of reading a holiday themed book and to read while enjoying your favorite holiday treat is The Twelve Days of Dash and Lily. This is a follow-up to Dash and Lily's Book of Dares. I can't really say a lot about this book in particular because obviously spoilers but I gave this a four out of five stars. The thing about both of these books is that it's New York at Christmas time which I've never been to New York in Christmas time but I kind of feel like I have now. It was very fun, very immersive and I do like this story and I like the characters. It was enjoyable. I do have one quote in here that I really liked that was uh, there had to be at least 20 people in the room now. Cousins and distant cousins and family friends who detained cousin status a kind of middle-class knighthood. I thought that was funny because I have a lot of aunts and uncles and cousins who are not actually related to me at all. It, it kind of is a middle-class knighthood. It's really funny. I liked it. I was really able to connect to in a world that was completely outside of my own because I'm not a teenager in New York at Christmas time obviously. And the final book that I read was The Buddy Read which was Ten Blind Dates by Ashley Elson. I gave this a five out of five stars. This is the only five star book that I have read so far this year. Crazy. Now that's not to say I didn't read a lot of like 4.75 star reads because I did. I've read like 10 of those but this is one of the ones that got like a full five stars. Now to be fair I do have a bonus point so it could technically the highest rating would be like a 5.25 but still, it's my highest rated book. This book was super fun, obviously. I loved every minute of it. It was so, it has like a huge cast of characters as far as like extended family members and just so many people. But at some point you kind of realize that like it doesn't really matter if you connect all the dots as to who everyone is. There, you know, there are cousins that are kind of evil and you know who they are and you don't necessarily need to know who their parents are because as, although they're mentioned, the, 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 it's a giant family dynamic 
and I think that just knowing that they're related is fine and not having to know like what part they all play, who they're related to, what like everything works. I don't think it's necessarily necessary for all of that. So once you get over that aspect of it, it was really fun. The dates were hilarious. Some were really good dates, some were horribly bad dates, and were just so funny. I had a really good time reading it. I'm really glad that it was picked as the book because I probably never would have picked it up without that. I'm not a huge contemporary reader, although over the past couple of years I've been reading a lot more due to like Tis the Season of Thon and the Contemporary of Thon and things that doing readathons and, and following more channels that follow a lot of contemporary reads like Chelsea Dolling reads. And so I've been reading a lot more contemporary than I ever have in the past and I'm really enjoying it. And you know, as a 32 year old woman, it's kind of hard for me to connect to teenagers sometimes, but it was a really fun story. I, a lot of times I read like the teenage stories and I'm like, oh my God, the angst, why are we all so angsty? Like as an older lady, like it's hard for me to um, accept the teenage characters sometimes, but this one really worked for me, which means it may not work for teens, I don't know. But it uh, really worked for me. I really enjoyed it. And I'm very happy that I got to read it. So these are some of the books that I read for the Tis the Season of Thon. Let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these, if you've enjoyed them. If you haven't read 10 Blind Dates, I highly recommend you do. There's still a little bit of time before Christmas. Also, if you have read 10 Blind Dates or if you read it in the future, I read on Goodreads the other day that there's going to be a follow-up book in spring 2021. I am so excited already, like just super excited. Like there's no cover, it was barely an announcement. Basically it's gonna follow two of the characters from the story, but it doesn't say which ones or what the story is and I'm so freaking excited. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos on Mondays and Wednesdays and bonus videos on the weekends. If you don't wanna miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe and until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.